At the start of the movie, we are introduced to a shady looking guy named Ciro, who is going through his neighborhood in Buenos Aires. Along the way, he spots a good looking car and breaks into it. It is revealed that Ciro is a thug by profession, so he covertly removes the stereo and steals a pair of sunglasses present in the overhead compartment. Right then, he has a sudden urge to urinate. But instead of going out and doing it like a gentleman, he urinates all over the rear seat. He even farts several times to make sure the car's owner's day is ruined. But after Ciro finishes up and prepares to leave, the door doesn't open. Scared, he tries opening the other doors, but all of them are shut intact. Slowly but steadily, panic sets in as Ciro realizes that he is in big trouble. He desperately tries breaking the window glass, but all of them appear to be impenetrable. Ciro then dismantles a part of the door and tries to open it from the inside. However, in the process, he hurts his hand badly, causing it to bleed. When nothing works, Ciro pulls out his gun and shoots at the front window, but the bullet ricochets off and penetrates his thigh. This makes him scream in pain, and to avoid excessive loss of blood, he removes his shirt and wraps it around the wound. After a while, a lady suddenly arrives outside and begins applying lipstick looking at the window. Ciro tries to seek her assistance, but it appears that the woman is oblivious to Ciro's presence inside. He shouts at her, but she ignores him and walks away. Ciro then tries to contact his wife, but the phone's battery expires before the call can be completed. After several hours of failed attempts, a tired Ciro falls asleep. The most satisfying part of all of this is that he Dutch ovened himself. The next morning, Ciro awakens feeling incredibly parched and realizes he's out of water. In a state of desperation, he resorts to licking the fog off the window to quench his thirst. <laughs> Fog doesn't have water, you dummy. As the day progresses, he takes out his backpack and removes the car stereo to listen to some music, hoping to distract himself from his dire situation. As one of his favorite songs begins playing on the radio, Ciro becomes completely engrossed in its rhythm and lyrics, momentarily forgetting his troubles. Ironically, his situation is described in the song, which mentions hazy windows, blood, and being trapped. So, right after the song ends, a motivated Ciro tries unlocking the door once more. Suddenly, a phone begins to ring in the car's stereo, and when Ciro picks it up, a man answers from the other end. He welcomes Ciro into the car and introduces himself as Dr. Enrique Ferrari. Enrique goes on to say that he owns the SUV and has been robbed 28 times in his life. Ciro is actually the 29th guy who has attempted to steal from him. Hearing this, an enraged Ciro desperately demands to be let free, but Enrique makes it clear that he's in no position to make demands. After this, he starts explaining his vehicle's features. He calls it 4x4 because it has a security alarm system linked to his phone that allows him to lock all of the four cars' doors. It is soundproof as well as bulletproof. Because of independent suspension, it can't be moved from the inside. Furthermore, all of the glass is polarized, even the front windshield. The gas tank, which can hold up to 120 liters of fuel is the only thing that isn't indestructible. Enrique cautions Ciro that a full gas tank is a potential bomb and that if he does something foolish, the car will blast with him inside. He then opens up to Ciro, revealing that he is a 60-year-old widower from Kilms and reminisces about his idyllic childhood in a middle-class family where doors were never locked. He laments that his current life is a far cry from his innocent past and longs for those simpler times. To test Ciro's moral compass, Enrique asks him what he would do if he caught his own son stealing. But Ciro has had enough and threatens to report Enrique to the authorities. In a moment of madness, he even brazenly suggests that he could kill Enrique and his entire family if he were to be set free. Good strategy, good strategy. Unfortunately, as he is ranting, the phone suddenly disconnects, further inflaming Ciro's anger and frustration. After a while, Enrique switches on the air conditioner and sets it to the loudest setting to torment the intruder. Ciro tries his best to turn it off, but it seems that nothing inside the car works. He has no choice but to remove his shirt from his wound and put it back on. To stop the bleeding in his knee, he tears a piece of his pants off and wraps that over the wound. As Ciro lies in a fragile state, Enrique calls him again and asks him the same question. What would he do if he found his kid stealing? Enrique also promises that he would give him water if he answers the question correctly. Hearing the reward, a thirsty Ciro responds to the question, but Enrique remains unsatisfied with his answer. Ciro begs him to stop, claiming that he has learned his lesson, but Enrique seems unconcerned and continues telling him about another event. Last year, two guys broke into his daughter's residence while she was parking her car. Despite being well prepared for such situations, the thieves held Enrique's grandson hostage for three hours. Meanwhile, 
Ciro is uninterested in Enrique's tales and asks him what type of doctor would keep a wounded person deprived of water. Before hanging up, Enrique compliments him on his query and challenges him to guess what sort of a doctor he is. As Ciro ponders over his options, a police vehicle approaches and pulls up alongside the SUV he is in. Seeing this, Ciro is filled with optimism and tries his best to grab the officer's attention. However, the officer instead issues a ticket to the SUV and walks away. Ah, the only thing police can be relied on for. Hours pass and Enrique finally contacts Ciro again, demanding his full name and ID number before he will give him any water. Ciro reluctantly complies and Enrique instructs him to find the washing hose at the back of the car where he can access some water. Despite the water being a bright blue color, Ciro is too desperate to care and drinks it down frantically, his parched throat grateful for any liquid, even windshield wiper fluid or whatever the hell that was. In the next scene, a hungry Ciro is nearly compelled to consume a lone bug that has found its way inside the car. Ciro is suffering from fever as the wound in his leg is turning yellow. When Enrique learns of this, he switches on the air conditioner to calm the intruder down. Then, he reveals that he is also suffering. Enrique is dying of cancer and has been given a year to live by his physicians. However, Ciro is too weak to listen, and after a few minutes, he passes out due to exhaustion and fever. After he wakes up, Ciro again gets the vigor to escape. He haphazardly searches the car handbook, looking for a way out, but all he manages to do is chew a page out of desperation. He becomes so helpless that he pisses in a container and drinks it. Little piss boy. Suddenly, a thief attempts to break into the SUV. This gives Ciro renewed hope of getting out, and he gets excited. However, the excitement quickly turns into disappointment when the robber is apprehended and beaten up by the locals. As the night descends, Ciro's thirst and hunger intensify, causing him to become delirious. He starts pondering about the unequal distribution of resources in the world, where a small fraction of individuals possess an abundance of wealth, while others are left to struggle. Ciro expresses his frustration with the systems and laws that favor the wealthy, perpetuating the cycle of poverty for the rest. Despite the dire situation he is in, he proclaims that he will not submit to the system, even if it means getting shot. This is the reason why he chose becoming a thief, just like his father and grandfather. The next day, Enrique calls again, and this time he reads the newspaper to Ciro. He says he's in a good mood and leads Ciro to a hidden chocolate bar in the SUV. After spending the whole day doing nothing, Ciro suddenly comes to life. He strikes one of the doors he damaged earlier and eventually succeeds in making a tiny hole that exposes him to the outside. He cries through the little hole in an attempt to get someone's attention but fails. Later, Enrique phones again to say that he has contacted Ciro's family. The latter weeps when he hears his family's names and begs Enrique not to hurt them with tears in his eyes. He asks what he has done to deserve this punishment, but Enrique is unmoved by all this. Instead, he takes out Ciro's criminal record and reveals that he had previously killed someone. It turns out, several years ago, Ciro stormed into a residence to commit theft, but he was stopped by a couple of brothers. With no way out, he shot them mercilessly. Enrique also mentions an elderly bus driver that Ciro had severely beaten. Ciro, however, refuses to accept responsibility, blaming the driver for not allowing him to loot the passengers. After charging his phone using solar power, Ciro attempts to contact his wife, but to no avail. So, he leaves a voicemail pouring out his heart and apologizing for his past mistakes. Following this, he continuously presses the car's start button and manages to switch it on. It's revealed that it can also be activated without a key after pressing it a certain amount of times, like a pattern. Ciro then fastens his seatbelt and shifts the gear into reverse. The gear, however, becomes locked in reverse, forcing him to drive backward. To grab people's attention, he speeds up the automobile and crashes it into a post. Fortunately, the airbag deploys in a timely manner and he is unharmed. Ciro is ultimately able to escape by kicking down the weakened back glass. He is in excruciating pain, yet he somehow manages to drag himself to a local gas station restaurant to get some food. As he savors each mouthful of his meal, the restaurant's manager urges him to pay for it and exit right away. Angered by the rude behavior, Ciro pulls out his gun and shoots the manager. Ugh. The very next second, Ciro drifts back to reality, revealing that he was daydreaming. Oh, and that he is still trapped in the SUV. His phone rings again, and it's Enrique on the other end. In a desperate plea, Ciro threatens to commit the unthinkable, but Enrique remains unfazed by his words. He laughs maniacally and arrives in front of the car, finally revealing his face. Enrique then gets in the vehicle and starts tending to Ciro's injuries. The latter is so exhausted that he lacks the energy to free and ultimately falls asleep. But when he gets up, he musters up all his courage, picks up his gun, and shoots at Enrique. Ciro barely misses, but he does manage to leap out of the car, finally setting himself free after days of excruciating captivity as he drags himself on the floor, firing shots in 
into the air. Enrique desperately tries to get him back. He is almost successful, but just then, a police officer notices the commotion and orders Enrique to put down his gun. When the cunning doctor refuses, an intense showdown begins. Cut to two hours later. A large number of people, media personnel, and cops have gathered around the scene. Enrique is still holding Ciro at gunpoint, despite everyone pleading with him to give up. When nothing works, an experienced negotiator is summoned. He immediately gets to work and asks Enrique what he wants. As the entire country watches, the doctor begins to list the daily struggles he faces that the government fails to address. He explains how he has to dodge over 2,000 piles of dog excrement on the street while walking to work because pet owners do not clean up after their dogs. He is also fed up with the drains that have not been cleaned up, the garbage that has been littered on the roads, and the terrible state of the homeless people. Not to mention the deforestation problem. Hearing all this, the public connects with Enrique and starts supporting him. However, the negotiator does not give up and ultimately convinces Enrique to let go of the boy. After Ciro is apprehended by the cops, Enrique is asked to surrender. But he does just the opposite. Enrique gets into his car and sets off the timer, resulting in a deadly explosion. He is killed on the spot, but thankfully, none of the people nearby are injured. The movie ends as Ciro is dragged away to the hospital, while the general public is left to ponder if the cold-hearted doctor was the good guy after all. That fog not having water thing was a troll, by the way. I just wanted to see how many people would comment about it before finishing the video. <laughs> Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.